Okay, in this video, what we're going to do is show you how to use the Gertzberg Saxton um, Beam Shaper. It's really just a uh, iterative phase retrieval on a uh, target image. And uh, we start out here with a, kind of a default um, DOE calculator window. And we'll go into the Add Edit DOE Elements. We're going to come back to this window for a couple of the parameters that are important in just a minute. But to show you how to do that, um, what we'll do is uh, add in the Gertzberg Saxton Beam Shaper as it's already done here from the drop down menu. I just, uh, I'll add another one just to show you how to do it. Gertzberg Saxton Beam sh Shaper, uh, paste new. There's, there's how you do it. So we don't need two of them, so we'll just cut one and use this guy. And over here in the element parameters, there's the size. Uh, which actually will change. So this really doesn't. Um, uh, it isn't. It will be recalculated uh, as you're working with some of the parameters. Um, let's let's go to the DOE calculator help file and uh, see what some of those parameters are. So uh, under the documentation tab and DOE and CGH calculator. Then um, under the GS Beam Shaper, page 13, we'll go down to 13, and uh, here, okay, so uh, size, um, that'll again be recalculated, Q levels, that's just the quantization, and um, you have the name of an image file uh, that will be used in the calculation, that's the target file. And that'll be reloaded when you hit the calculate button. So you don't have to change that now. And then you have a two element vector. The first element is the number of loops. And the second element is the number of um, uh, uh, pixels in the fast Fourier transform. Uh, the, uh, and this will determine the size along with the sampling on the master panel. And then the horizontal range is the full angular range corresponding to your target um, far field BMP file that you'll load in here. Okay, and I'll try to describe that in a minute. And the display fa uh, flag, if it's one, it'll display some um, intermediate uh, calculation um, results that uh, that I'll show when we do the calculation. So here's H range. So if this is a CGH, and the size of the CGH is, a, again, a function of the number of samples in the Fourier transform and the master pixel, uh, pixel sampling, then H range is when that hologram is um, projected into the Fraunhofer zone, then the angular range associated with the file that you use as an input will be um, spread over that full angular range. So um, let's go back to the calculator and um, I want to display that, uh, show you here that that's uh, the default is 10 cycles and 512 by 512. If we go back uh, to the uh, main window here, uh, you can see that you have 2.1 micron pixel sampling at a wavelength of 650 nanometers. So um, the size of the FFT, uh, the, the size of the CGH would be 512 times 2.1 e to the minus 6. It'd be 1.1 millimeter on a side. Okay. And the full, the maximum full angular range that you could use would be um, the arc sine of uh, Lambda, uh, and that was 650 nanometers divided by 2.1. Of course, you'll enter whatever you want there. And then the pixel sampling of the uh, master file, 2.1 even minus 6, default for the MLT. And that'll be in radians, so we'll do times uh, 180 over pi to get it to degrees. And then that's a half angle, so we'll do times 2 for the full angle. So the maximum angle that you can use with this pixel sampling is 36 degrees, which is really big. Um, and uh, typically what you'd want to use is a number much smaller than that, say 5 or 10 degrees. 
Uh, so when we, oops, sorry, I wasn't supposed to show you that yet. So when we go back to the calculator, um, we're going to enter a number that um, is maybe, let's say, 10 degrees. Okay. And uh, show you what happens um, when we hit the calculate button. We'll choose our target file that we're trying to make. Here, just an image of the school mascot, Wilbur. And then this intermediate calculation here will show you um, uh, several things. Uh, right now, we're not going to save the bitmap because uh, it's just an example, but you could if you wanted to. Uh, here's what the estimated image would be after just 10 cycles of the iteration. Um, not too bad uh, for the image projection. That's assuming a uniform um, input uh, field, um, basically a you know, plane wave, uh, uniform plane wave amplitude. And then here's the CGH. Okay. Now we can go back and um, we can change the number of iterations to increase our signal to noise ratio. Let's increase it to say 50. And uh, then calculate. And this is my input image. So my 10 degrees would be from one side to the other would be the 10 degrees. And then Going 50 calculate every 10 calculations that'll show an intermediate image. Okay, so there's the final result. Different kind of description or different kind of CDH a little bit because it chooses a different random number seed. And now if we go into the image, it should be just a little sharper. Uh, actually, what what's important is the signal to noise ratio is the ratio in decibels of the power in the desired part of the image uh, divided by the background. Um, so our signal to noise ratio after 50, 50 iterations was about 10 dB. Uh, that's not too bad. Uh, you can, you're still going up, so you can continue that if you like. All right.